I'm joined now by Mary Lou Zeman from uh, Bowdoin College. Mary Lou, welcome. Thank you for coming on our programme. Thank you for inviting me to join you. Now, I know you're talking about climate change here at the uh, JMM. Give us a flavour of uh, what you'll be talking about in your lecture. So I think I'd like to get across uh, three main themes um, about the role that mathematicians can play in climate and sustainability applications. One is to help bridge the gap between the science and policy decisions, so how to support um, policy decisions. Another is understanding the concept of tipping points within a more mathematical framework than they're currently discussed. And another is the importance of um, model hierarchies for addressing questions of climate or sustainability. Now, you're talking there about uh, mathematicians getting involved in policy. That's a slightly unusual position to take. How important is it for mathematicians to get involved in that way? I think it's um, very important that we make more of an effort to be involved. And I know that scientists have a way of um, being concerned that you can't be objective and be an activist at the same time. Uh, but I think we can indeed be objective and help inform policy decisions by understanding what the policy question is in the broader framework of the policy question. And that typically involves understanding not only the science but the economics and the constraints of the decision maker. And that will, uh, that will change the kind of models we look at. But um, by using mathematics as a language that bridges between all the different components of the decision, I think we could have an impact. Now one of the things you talked about is the use of uh, mathematical models and how to bridge the gap between a simple and a more complex model. If within climate and within many sustainability questions, but let's talk about climate for now, there are models at the intuitive dynamical end of the spectrum where we use simple box models or um, other dynamical approaches to understand the big features of the climate system, like the energy coming in from the sun, the energy leaving from the earth, the way the ice interacts with reflecting more or less energy. Um, and we can understand those with very small models and they build our intuition beautifully. But then at the other extreme there are the fine scale, very complicated, million lines of code, global climate models that are um, computational and extremely difficult to understand intuitively but are necessary for being able to make relatively accurate predictions about what will happen in, this, in the next decade or two within a small region. Um, so the kind of information that the decision makers need to be able to inform their policy. And so you have these two extremes of model. And there's rather a gap in between. And I think one of the things mathematicians can do is really help think intelligently about how the models at the dynamical end can, help, can inform what kind of experiments we do in the big computational models. Because those computational models are where we have to do the experiments. We can't experiment with this planet on which we live. So um, that's really the translating, transitioning from that gap between the simple models to the complex models is, is a huge difficulty. Now climate change is not just a very interesting subject, it's a, it's a very important one, isn't it? So do you think mathematicians, do you think enough is being done? No, I don't think enough work is going on. We have this enthusiasm among our community, in the math community and the broader science community, of young people who don't think in terms of just understanding the world, they think in terms of helping to fix the world. And they're ready to learn how to do this interdisciplinary modelling. And they're ready to think broad-mindedly about how to use math and economics and biology and chemistry all together to address these, these policy questions. And so I think we have the science and the enthusiasm and the will to do a lot more. And that's one of the reasons I'm excited about the education innovations that can help train those people. Mary Lou, thank you very much indeed for joining us today. My pleasure, thank you.